In such cities as Casablanca, Mazagan, and Fez, names well known to many American soldiers of World War II, life follows much the same pattern today as it did centuries ago. The water boy still fills his container at the public fountain. He'll sell you water by the jar full or by the full, if you're a thirsty traveler, directly from the goatskin container he carries on his shoulder. Working with the hands, slowly and patiently, seems to come naturally to Moroccans who know very little of the mechanical ways of the world. Stone is used to build houses, slowly, yes, but houses of lasting value. Each and every stone is shaped as a separate unit. No single one is exactly like its neighbor. When held in place with mortar, these stone walls will last for centuries, just like this old fort that was built the same way over 500 years ago. The remains of another civilization can be seen in Morocco, for this ancient land was once a part of the great Roman Empire. 2,000 years have elapsed since the Romans were here, yet the signs of that ancient culture are still to be seen. In the centuries between the Roman Empire and the present, Morocco has been a self-ruling nation. Today, most of it is a protectorate of France, yet governed to a large extent by the Sultan, who is both the civil and religious leader. Much of Morocco is bordered on the east by the towering Atlas Mountains. Below the mountains there are broad, gently rolling valleys. Here the Moroccan farmer works his fields and tends his flocks. The soil is good but rocky in many areas and yields more to the skill and endurance of the farmer and his animals than to the quality of his equipment. The more animals a farmer owns, the more work he can accomplish in a day. Crops are often irrigated with water from a hand-dug well a patient donkey furnishes the power to lift the water out of the well, a can full at a time. Given water and good soil, crops flourish under the strong Moroccan sun. Most of the wheat farmers use sickles to harvest their grain. It means weeks of back-breaking labor, but harvest time is a happy time for the Moroccan farmer. A poor harvest can mean hunger. A good harvest means there will not only be plenty of food, but surplus crops for selling and trading to obtain the other necessities of life. At the threshing ground, the stalks of wheat are trampled by horses. This loosens and removes the precious grains of wheat by a method of threshing that's been used in Morocco for centuries. It's a slow process, but it works. When the horses have finished, the trampled material is tossed into the air. The wind carries away the lighter chaff, leaving eventually only the good wheat grains in a neat pile below. Sheep are raised in all parts of Morocco. The shepherd's son rather enjoys helping tend the flock. The wool and sheepskins are taken to a watering place for washing. This has always been women's work, and the Moroccan women do their job well. After washing, most of the moisture is removed by beating. Wool is a most important commodity, for clothing is all handmade in Morocco. Thread and yarn is made by women who have learned this skillful art as children.
Some of the yarn is colorfully dyed and hung out to dry. Moroccans often build the machines that they're unable to buy. Here, an old bicycle wheel is used to help wind thread onto a bobbin. The bobbin, in turn, is used to feed a hand-operated loom and turn out strong, colorful wool cloth. Clay pots and dishes for household use are all handmade by other skillful workers. After baking in a kiln, the pots can be sold as they are or beautifully decorated before being sent to market. Metal is scarce in Morocco. The blacksmith uses old bits of scrap iron to make nails and hinges and a great variety of hardware items. All the products of the farmer and the craftsman are found in the public market. If you look long enough and bargain hard enough, you can buy all the necessities of life in Morocco. The last tiny bits of foreign matter are removed from the grain before this important farm product is offered for sale. There's homemade candy to buy. The shepherd brings his sheep to market, sometimes to trade for other things, and sometimes to sell for cash. The spice merchant has seasonings for every taste, and if his hot pepper gives you a stomachache, the druggist will be happy to sell you a remedy. Camel Market is always an active trading center, for camels are used for transportation, as work animals on the farm, and as food. Camel hides are used as leather. The camel never seems concerned with his fate, whatever it may be. In Moroccan town and countryside today, life still proceeds at much the same pace as it did during biblical times. How long it will continue at this pace in a modern world is uncertain. Perhaps widespread changes will occur, for here and there, one does see signs of a more modern life. Not all farmers are content to till the soil with a crude plow when a machine will do the job better and faster. Just ask this young Moroccan farmer. He'll tell you. Not all farmers are satisfied to harvest their crops with a sickle when there's a better way to do it. In certain cities, there are signs of modernization. A Morocco of tomorrow. For man's desires here are the same as his desires anywhere else in the world. Changes begin first in the minds of these good people who, like people anywhere, hope to improve the living standard in their land. But in spite of the changes that may someday alter the face of Morocco, there will always be reminders of its colorful past, like the Berber tribesmen from the distant Atlas Mountains who hold their fantasia, or parade in religious celebration, today just as they have for centuries past.